Being a lifelong tech enthusiast, I constantly get new pieces of technology that I think are going to improve my life and then they end up not being useful or I just leave them on a shelf because they don't actually help me. But these five pieces of tech have improved my life in real and measurable ways. Let's get started with number one, which is Amazon's Kindle. Now, this Kindle I've had for a couple of years at this point, and I was always a person who used to say, why would I need a Kindle? I can just read books on my phone. But the truth is, while I had a smartphone for most of my adult life, I never actually read books on it. Like realistically speaking, when I was in college, other than books that I was assigned to read, I probably read one or two books a year, if that. I ended up getting a Kindle because I decided I wanna read more than just one book a year. And so I set the intention that I was going to try to read every day when I got my Kindle a couple of years ago. And the first year I had it, again, I went from reading about one book a year to I read 32 books in the first year. And this is one of those things where, yes, the Kindle is just a piece of tech, and yes, you can read books on your phone just as well as on the Kindle. But because the Kindle is so simplistic and only does one thing, where if you have it, you're only going to be reading. Whereas when I was on my phone, I would always end up, I'd read the book for a little bit, but then I'd get a little bored because reading wasn't as fun. And then I'd go on YouTube or TikTok or check my email or whatever it is. And I ended up just not reading. The Kindle being so single focused actually allows me to use it as a book and as a reading device. And that's been huge for me. It sounds hyperbolic, but it's actually changed my life because I went from someone who I used to read when I was a kid, but then as an adult, I never really read for fun or outside of a work or school setting. And now I'm someone where now I have a habit that I read basically every day and I absolutely love it. I've learned so many new things from reading. It's been such a positive thing in my life that I just cannot recommend this enough. So while of course it's not necessary, yes, you can read on your phone and if that's someone where it works for you, I say that's awesome. If you're someone like me who just wanted to read more, I cannot recommend getting a Kindle highly enough. And the other positive that actually really helped me is I read before bed and this has actually improved my sleep a lot because it stopped me from before I would take my phone to bed and then I would kind of play on my phone telling myself I was gonna read, but really I wasn't really, I'd watch YouTube videos or whatever. And now I don't take my phone in the bedroom. I just take the Kindle and you can't get distracted on a Kindle. You're not gonna go play around and web browse on this thing because it's just not a good experience. So this has actually improved my sleep alongside with making me read more books. So cannot recommend this enough. And the other thing, no, you don't have to get the newest one or the nicest one. The biggest recommendation I can make is get one that has a backlight. You can get a used one. I think I picked this one up used actually, but make sure it has a backlight so that you can read in the dark. That's been something that's been really helpful for me. Side note, I just finished David Goggins Can't Hurt Me and it is a fantastic book. So give it a read if you're gonna get a new Kindle. Moving on to the next thing, which goes hand in hand with your Kindle is get yourself an iPad. Now it doesn't have to be an iPad. It can really just be any tablet but get yourself something where you can take digital notes, but you can actually handwrite with them. I think the handwriting here is really important. And let me just tell you a few ways how I use my iPad and how I will never go back to not having some sort of digital note-taking device. Number one is I take it obviously for notes while I'm reading books. So here's some of my notes. This is exactly what I do while I'm reading is I have my Kindle and I set it down and I'm reading. And then while I'm reading my book, I just take notes. So right here, I have it like this, page three, I wrote some stuff down. These were my important takeaways from the book. And then as you go through, I just keep taking notes on the book. And then later on down the road, like let's say I forgot about this book, The Buddha and the Badass, which I kind of did, you know, it was two years ago at this point. I don't remember exactly everything from the book, but I can go back through my personal handwritten notes and I can see these were the things that were important to me when I was reading the book. And just the act of writing things down and thinking about what's important in this book, what's important enough that I should write it down, it helps you remember the book so much more. So this changed how I read books and how I retain the information in books. Again, it was fantastic. And I don't wanna go back to not being able to take notes. Now, you definitely can take notes on a pen and paper, and that's a great way to do it. I think it works great, it's much cheaper than affording a tablet. I will say though, it is easier for me to take something on the iPad because this way I have all of my pens, like if I was to scroll, 
scroll to the bottom look at this i have all my different color pens which makes it really easy to keep my notes looking nice and organized i've got highlighters built in and all of my notes even if my ipad is lost they're all backed up to the cloud where i can't say that with a notebook and you can search through things like using text to handwriting so it makes it easier to find stuff and I just find that if it's digitally somewhere, then I have a lot better chance of keeping it. Whereas I've lost so many notebooks. I have a couple over here, but I just lose them. And then all that information I had that I probably wanted to remember or maybe wanted to look back on is gone. So I'm a huge believer in taking what feels like a physical note because it's, it's I'm writing it down, but it's actually a digital note. I'm a huge believer in that. And the second main thing that I use my iPad for other than writing notes while I'm reading books, is actually just for doodling. And I don't think people talk about this enough, which is that I think letting your inner child just play, just have fun. This is a toy, you can just play with it. Like here's here's something I've been doing, um, not every day, but I try and do it at least a couple times a week. I just try and doodle anything that I'm thinking about. So. I just like, here's one I did the other day. I just draw, I, I really like that you can use a bunch of different colors and I have this and there you go, you can have, and I have a bunch of them. I've doodled a bunch of stuff and it's, it's really fun for me to just be able to go in and draw whatever and then it's so much less intimidating than like for me, a pencil and paper where then once I write it down, then it's permanent. And now it like, for whatever reason, it gives me anxiety to think of like permanently ruining some paper with my sh pencil or, or pen strokes. So it gives me anxiety, but on the digital, I can just undo or erase as many times as I want. And it takes away that anxiety. And it's really easy to play with colors and paint brushes and all that sort of thing. So it's super fun. And I also got to say, you don't have to get the nicest one. This iPad is five or six years old at this point, And I've used it basically every day and it still is in fantastic condition. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't think you need a new one or an expensive one. As long as it supports a pencil and it doesn't have to be an iPad, it can be a tablet of any kind, Samsung tab, whatever you want to do. As long as it supports a pencil, I think it's going to be great. And it's a good companion for your Kindle and you can do your little doodles and all that. Like, look at this. This is just cute, right? All right, moving on to the next thing. This is for all you gamers out here. I have my Steam Deck. Now I've been a gamer my entire life, but I've basically only played PC games or sometimes on Xbox or PlayStation. But this thing has absolutely changed the way that I game. I used to go and sit at my desk, which is where I'm sitting right now. And then I would just sit down and play video games and kind of be stuck in my room and people wouldn't see me. And there is nothing wrong with that. That's totally great. But what the Steam Deck has allowed me to do is start taking back time that was like useless wasted time and turning it into gaming time. And then I don't have to spend some of my other time that's valuable on gaming, if that makes sense. It just makes, it feels like I have more time in my day. And let me give a couple examples. So I'm going on a road trip in two days and I'm gonna be taking my Steam Deck and I do a solid amount of road tripping. And then when I'm not driving and talking with the driver or like hanging out or whatever, I can be playing games. Like for example, I played a few hours of Elden Ring in a car trip the other day and it turned this boring, I'm driving in a car and I'm kind of stuck here just waiting for us to get there until all of a sudden, I don't want the car trip to be over because I'm having so much fun playing Elden Ring. And so that has been huge. You can also obviously take them to airports or on planes or any type of waiting that you have to do. The Steam Deck can kind of fill that role and it's something where you can take that wasted time where you're waiting for something to happen and you can just play some games. Like here's another example. When I'm cooking, I'll take the Steam Deck up into the kitchen and then I'm like, okay, I have to wait 10 minutes before I have to flip this over. And I'll just stand there at the counter playing on my Steam Deck for 10 minutes. Then as soon as the thing's ready to be flipped, I flipped it, I flip it and you can do quick pause and quick resume. So your game is always right there, ready for you. And then it just fills in and there's 10 minutes of gaming that I just got in that I wouldn't have been able to get in before. And I probably would have just sat there wasting time on my phone, which wouldn't have been nearly as fun for me as playing video games. Another huge plus for me for the Steam Deck is that after a long day, my girlfriend and I like to hang out and she likes to watch TV more often than not. And I like to play video games more often than not. And when I was playing on a PC, I would play in my room and she would watch TV, but then we weren't hanging out or spending time together. And when I played on a console, well, if she wanted to watch TV, then I can't play. And if I want to play, then she can't watch TV. So there's kind of a scheduling problem there. But what the Steam Deck allows me to do is we can both sit on the couch, she can watch her show and I can play on the Steam Deck. And then we're both spending some 
non-interactive time together, but it still can feel that role where we're both getting rest and relaxation and we're both together, but we can both be doing our own things. And that's something the Steam Deck has allowed me to do that no other gaming device has allowed me to do. So I think this thing is awesome and I cannot recommend it enough. All right, moving on to the next thing. And this might sound a little silly, but this thing has been huge, which is that it is uh, AirPods. Now, they don't have to be AirPods. They can be any type of noise-canceling headphones that are small and can fit in your pocket, and here's why. I keep these in my pocket all the time, and what this allows me to do is that when I'm out and about or when I'm trying to focus on something, I can pop these in, and then all of a sudden, the rest of the world just goes quiet, and all of a sudden, it allows me to focus. That's something I haven't gotten with non noise canceling headphones. And these things have been game changing for that. Like, let me just tell you one of my main use cases. I like to go to the park and read, or I like to go out in public or out where the sun is shining so I can get some outside time because I sit at a desk all day. So I'm always trying to find new ways to get outside. But when I try and go read outside with other people around, the noises will distract me from reading. But these things allow me to put them in, then I can block out the rest of the world, and then I can read my book while still being outside in the sunshine and enjoying just kind of being around other people or being around, but without getting distracted by all the noise and conversations and all that sort of thing. So they have been absolutely fantastic. Again, you don't have to get AirPods Pro. You can get whatever noise canceling headphones you want, but get something that has noise canceling and that can fit in your pocket so that you always have them whenever you need them. That's been critical. And for the last thing, and this one is kind of a Hail Mary long shot, but this has actually been my biggest surprise as far as something that I didn't know that I needed. I mean, need is a very strong word, but so something I didn't know that I even really wanted until I have it. And now I don't go a day without using. It. And it's this right over here, one sec. We got this bad boy right here. This right here is an electric skateboard. This one is the Meepo Voyager X, and it's kind of one of the bigger, badder skateboards, but you definitely don't need this. I'm gonna set it down though, because it's really heavy. You might be thinking to yourself, why on earth would I, like, would I want an electric skateboard? And that is a very fair question, but let me tell you why I want an electric skateboard and why I use this thing basically every day. Some people's lifestyles, this just isn't gonna work out, and so this isn't for you, and I'm sorry that you miss it. But what this has done for me is that it's taken a lot of my basic commutes. Like for example, I go to the gym pretty much every day. I also will go to friends' houses or just run errands or anything like that. And most of it is pretty close to my house. I would say like within five to 10 miles from my house. And as long as it's within that, that range, I take my skateboard. And here's the kicker. It's kind of like the Steam Deck in this way because it turns a commute, which used to be I'm driving in a car. It's not the worst, but it's also not fun for me. I don't really like sitting in a car that much if I'm driving. But what this did is it took that kind of wasted commuting time and turned it into all of a sudden when I'm skateboarding, I'm having a good time. And I should say, I also do put on my headphones, although I don't put them in noise canceling because that would be dangerous. But anyway, I get to cruise around on my skateboard and then I'm enjoying myself while I'm getting to my destination. Like I'm just having a good time, just having fun. I guess you could also say it's a cost savings because not driving a car means you're gonna put less wear and tear on your car. Gas mileage on your car is obviously gonna be more expensive than an electric skateboard, but I'm not even making all those cases. All I'm saying is that you can turn what were kind of boring trips to the gym or to the grocery store or to your friend's house you can turn those boring trips all of a sudden into something that is fun and engaging and exciting. And I've done that with this board. In the last year, I've put about a thousand miles on it, which is kind of crazy because I live in the Pacific Northwest and it's snowy for a good amount of the year. So that means during the summer, I have been really putting miles on this thing but it has been hugely positive in my life and it's been seriously awesome. I really can't recommend this enough, although I know skateboarding isn't for everybody, so if you don't like skateboarding, it's not for you. But if you do like skateboarding or you're like me where I longboarded as a kid, like through middle school and high school and I thought it was great, this is like the next evolution for me in longboarding, which it takes a lot of the work out of it and I can go much farther distances. Like this one has a range of about 30 miles in the real world. And I don't use that on a daily basis, but I generally average five to 10 miles pretty much every day on this skateboard. So cannot recommend it enough. Now, I wanna say before the video ends that none of these devices are necessary. None of them are gonna make you happy all by themselves. None of them are gonna improve your life so dramatically that everything gets better and not all of a sudden you're happy all the time and you're not depressed. It's not gonna do that. It's just not gonna do that. And if you expect that, you're gonna have a bad time. What these devices are for me though, have been little 
tools that can help me improve my life in the ways that I personally want to improve it. I wanted to read more, so I got a Kindle. I wanted to play more video games, but I didn't want to take more time into my life, so I got a Steam Deck. I wanted to commute, but I wanted to enjoy my commute, so I got this. It's things like that, where it's trying to improve parts of your life, but it is not going to make you happy in and of themselves. So I just wanna be clear with that. And then the last thing is, this is my list of my five pieces of tech that have made my life better, but I would love to hear yours. I know everyone has different things that are valuable to them in different ways that we're all trying to improve our lives. So what are the ways that you're trying to improve your life and what are the pieces of tech that, you're, that you've used in order to enable you to improve your life? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.